When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink, but I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds. I love chic branding and smart water sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. As a CEO and fashion authority, I know it's the details that truly matter. And when it comes to luxury, every stitch must be perfectly tailored. At Genesis, they've delivered on every element of the GV80. Two-line LED headlamps accentuate an exterior that exudes athletic elegance. Inside, discover an expansive cabin with ambient lighting. Take a close look at the Genesis GV80 and you'll see. Lux is in the details. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Zoe, and you're listening to Climbing in Heels. This show is all about celebrating extraordinary superwomen who will be sharing their incredible journeys to the top, all while staying glamorous. There is so much going on in the world right now, and it's an understatement to say that there's a lot of darkness. Earlier this week, I was so incredibly shattered to hear about the passing of Suzanne Summers. When I first started in the podcast world, Roger and I had the absolute pleasure of interviewing Suzanne and her lovely husband, Alan Hamill. Suzanne was the absolute definition of a warrior in every sense of the word. She dazzled audiences for years and fought courageously for equal pay for women when nobody else was approaching the subject. Suzanne was such a loving, positive light, and I wanted to share our interview with her to help shed some much-needed inspiration and joy. My hope is that her story touches your heart the way it did mine. It is by far and away one of the greatest love stories I have ever, ever heard. And I remember very clearly finishing the podcast that day and sobbing, just like the happiest tears, because I had never... I'd never heard of a love story that wasn't in a movie that was this real. It was like The Notebook. And I just fell even deeper in love with Suzanne. She was truly, 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 and will continue to be, a shining light above everybody. And that smile, I will never forget it. She literally smiled through the whole interview. Just a positive force for women and just, you know, of health and wellness. And, you know, she will just be remembered in the most beautiful way by everyone. I hope you enjoy this one because it means a lot to me and I wanted to share it with you. You're the famous Roger Berman, aren't you? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. I want to add a little uh, to brag about my husband. He was actually the Johnny Carson of Canada. He uh, hosted the precursor to Saturday Night Live and they did outrageous satire on Canadian television. And um, when I met him, he was so famous, I couldn't believe he wanted to take me out. Oh, you know, when I met Rachel, she was so hot. I, I didn't think she'd take me out. So I'm kind of right there with you. No, but that, by the way, can I just say Canadians are like my favorite people. I, agree. I what, what is it in the water in Canada that everyone is just so much nicer from Canada? Everyone I meet is just the kindest, friendliest, happiest, like giving uh, like amazing, amazing people. I'm. I feel like we need to spend more time in Canada. Yes, we do. Do you know anyone like that, Alan? I, I don't know any Canadians like that at all. <laughs> wow. Well. But what I wanted to ask when I was reading up on on the two of you, don't you live in California? Well, Suzanne does. Or how did this whole like? How are you How'd a you big meet? Canadian star, but she's a big U.S. star? I, I just and you're still together. Can you? Can someone explain that to me? Want me to start, Alan? Sure. When I met him. Um, I was not Suzanne Summers in that I, I had no fame at all. And he, um, this was nine years before three's company. Oh, he, wow. Yeah. He yeah. felt he had gone as far as he could go in Canadian television. So he moved to the States and he partnered with Dick Clark and he and Dick Clark started producing shows. And oh, that, oh, that slacker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and one of those shows I was hired as kind of the, the pretty model and um and then the rest is history he i i was hired for a game show they were producing called the anniversary game and i was terrible at it 
So I left in shame because I kept looking at the wrong camera, but he found my phone number and called me up. And uh, so I went out with him and slept with him on the first date because I thought I may never get another chance. <laughs> oh my God, I love you. I love you because I keep telling all my girlfriends that are single right now that go on dates. I'm like, don't do that. But now I have to kind of retract on that, wow. right? Wow. Yeah, but, I, but there was some... Uh, there was some you knew. I, I, never, I, I met him and I knew him. I didn't right. know what that meant, but I knew him. If you believe in past lives, I think we've been together a lot. That's amazing because a psychic told us that too, Rachel. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Okay. And I think that you could coin it as chemistry. I love that so much. Oh my God, much. I'm going to cry. Well, Roger and I have been together for 30 years and married for 24. To, Congratulations. So t- thank you. And I think, you know, that was sort of the impetus for Works For Us was because I think people probably the same as when they meet you guys, like how on earth have you yeah. been together this long in this industry? How do you work together and all of that? But you've actually been married for 44, which but is incredible. How long, how long before you started? So keep going with the story. This is a good story. So, this is like the so best you woke story. up the next morning <laughs> and what happened? In, in my own bed, I slipped out. Okay. Yeah, oh, walk of shame. Room. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Uh, what You know, when you come home, uh, like, Four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Walk skating. of shame. The walk Why of are you shame. wearing heels? Why are you wearing heels? Yeah. Yes. Makeup holding, down to your no, chin. You're holding your heels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love I it. Just, I, I, I would have married him that night, I, but he wasn't ready. He was just getting out of a marriage. And um, I went to my therapist at the time and I said, I met the man I want to marry. And she said, tell me about him. She said, oh, he won't be ready to be married for 10 years. And so... Ten years later, maybe it was nine years. I'm not sure. Um, it, it all worked out, but we were blending families too. That is so hard. I had one child; he had two, and there is no child, no child, who wants a new parent. And so they they feel threatened. They try to divide. You know, mommy, can you and I go out for dinner? Just us, not them, kind of things. And it wasn't until we got married and we became a united front that the kids realized they lost that battle. And then they all started settling in. And it's it, it takes decades to really become a um, cohesive whole family when you're blended like that. But we're, we're there, and it's really wonderful. And I used to say, Suzanne, Suzanne, can we go out for dinner, just the two of us, without them? <laughs> 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 Alan, I feel I, like I feel, I feel like, like Alan, you me. and Roger I might have like to go me, play. Alan. You might need to go play some golf. And how do you know he plays golf? I don't. I'm gonna just make the assumption: tennis, golf, walk, talk. Probably plays drink. ice hockey. He's from Canada. He probably <laughs> plays ice hockey. Yeah, and, and golf is not fun in those Canadian winters. No. Actually, in Canada, in Canada, the real crazy golfers they play golf in the winter time using orange balls. Yep, I've heard that snow. Golf, really? Snow. Yep, snow golf. Oh my god! While they're experiencing blue balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love you guys. This is quickly well, becoming forget, my he, favorite but episode. But don't forget, yet. he was a Canadian. He was like the Canadian Johnny Carson. The man's <laughs> funny. He's better than Johnny Carson. <laughs> Come on, um, this is this is this is heating up here. Wait, you guys. So I love this story, and I do think it's kind of funny too. I just want to point out some similarities. I love. That Suzanne's like, okay, we need to blend the kids. We need to keep them together. We need to make this work. We need to sort it out. And Alan's like, can we just go out without any of them? <laughs> Which is what yeah. Roger does all the time. Right. Can we and, just and, go and you and I me? have, and these are these are my kids, and no, no, I like, still yeah, want to <laughs> abandon them whenever possible. <laughs> just so where I love them, but I do like abandonment. Okay. But what I want to know, hold on a second. So okay. you did. So it sounds like you. Were you dating for those 10 years before you got married? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, we're, yeah. yeah we're, we're actually living together. Got it. Right, so... No shake so no break is, Right, so this is a, a question that I wanted to ask. Do you celebrate your, like, first date anniversary, or do you celebrate your actual wedding anniversary? Or are you like, what about the credit for the first everything. 10 years? Like, how do you, how do you reconcile that? Because a lot of people are like, oh, they just get engaged and within the year they're married. So they're like, oh, it's our marriage. But like, if you put in a decade, like, how do you signify that? Or do you not? We fought a lot in that decade. So we like to start with the actual wedding date. <laughs> ah, that's a new one. Okay. But I'll t- I'll, the, the fighting was essential. I never knew what we were fighting for or about. 
we were fighting for a level playing field. I didn't want to be controlled and he was very controlling and we worked that one out and um, uh, we got married when it was right. Uh, it, it was uh, in the first year of Three's company and I, I, I just, it, it's, it's the best decision I've ever made. Aww. Yeah, she, she finally got a job. <laughs> I'm, I'm a married this woman. <laughs> You're like, oh, finally, That's she's amazing. an earner. You're like, oh, like yeah. finally, she's an earner. I'm in. <laughs> I love it. I agree. By the way, for those listeners out there that know, Rachel had no job when I fell in love with her, and she was living in um, my can apartment I say all with no fairness, job. I just graduated college. Of course, I didn't have a job. No, most people f- graduating college go into their jobs they that they not. interview for. They re- take time off. They travel. In any they... event, um, <laughs> yes, there was a little bit of similarities in that story. But too. you guys, we waited eighteen years. We were together eighteen years before we had kids. So, Alan, did you propose to her? Well, I mean, this was way back, right? Traditional, no. Actually, I did. I remember the night she had just done the um, Dinah Shore show. And we went out for dinner to this little French restaurant we loved. It was on Melrose Place in L.A. And it was a tiny place called Le Restaurant. <laughs> it was tiny. It was sexy. The lighting was great. It was peaceful and silent in there. People whispered. No one made any noise. The food was great. The drinks were great. And uh, they had these pink candelabra on the table. So the pink reflection on our faces made us both look really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about and the I light. Proposed to her, I proposed to her that night. And actually, sitting at another table very close by was Don Rickles. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, I did propose that night. It was great. And thankfully, she said yes. I wonder how many people say no. I think if you are, are in the frame of mind you're going to ask, you have a pretty good idea of what the other, other person yes. you would hope. You would hope. Unless, yeah. Or unless you're completely delusional and, right. and don't get the... In which case, it's good to say case, no because they're completely not, yeah. not in the right place. Right. You know, one, one of our kids describes our relationship as functionally codependent. Oh, I think that's what we are. That's sort of us, except I would say Rachel's a little more codependent. You're codependent in your own way. It's just in a more subtle, subtle I could, way. I could adapt. You could adapt. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of you making me coffee, I could easily get it myself. <gasps> I'm teasing. Oh, don't say that, Roger. Teasing. Yeah, he's what just... do you mean? I say that because I get the coffee. Suzanne, I'm the one that gets the coffee every morning at Starbucks, please. I'm but... not saying anything that will be taken away from me because it doesn't exist. <laughs> I think, I think um, having your coffee brought to you in the morning is one of the reasons for a great marriage. Call me well, shallow. I do that. I well, do that, but, but I go reversed. to Starbucks. But you have to admit, honey, for the first 20 years, I was bringing it to you in bed. Now, since Starbucks has happened, he goes at 6.30 in the morning. I will say this to anyone who will hear me. There is no one on this earth that provides like Rachel provides Aww. for me. I'm serious in I that way. I do spoil way. him. Like, you have, like... It, Anyway, but this is not about us. It's about you guys. So I want to hear about your wedding. I want to hear about your wedding because we know that you you were together for 10 years before you proposed. And then what kind of wedding? Because you were obviously, as you mentioned, Suzanne, you were blending families, which as we know, and I just want to say thank you for being very candid and honest about that because I think not everybody is. And it's a very complicated situation. I'm pretty yeah. sure I don't know. I don't know any situation that it hasn't been complicated and i think nothing is truer than what you said about no child wanting a new parent because they don't oh, no. our wedding day was one of the worst days of my life stop no stop it was awful <gasps> everything about it was awful why we invited the wrong people okay uh, God. there were a lot of have to invites you yeah. know right yeah, of yeah. course always so it's sort of industry is what you're saying yeah mm. yeah and it was the first year of three's company so i was still into pleasing everybody and here's the weekend the the day before morley safer and the crew of 60 minutes when 60 minutes really meant something came to our house to interview me uh as the next farrah fawcett because farrah oh. had just left uh charlie's angels and three's company was now number one and i had to go get my hair colored it was before i had my 
stylists come to the house. I hadn't learned that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. And I went and, and you know how hairdressers always say, your blonde is a little brassy. Let me tone yes. it down a little. Yes. Let oh me God. just so let I me said, use a little toner. Yeah. Okay. And I came home with brown hair. Oh my God. Now, I walked in the house with brown hair and I hate it. Now I said, what happened to your hair? But I've got Morley Safer in the living room. And now I'm trying to wash it out like it would wash out. And my hair <laughs> looked terrible. And I had relatives staying at the house who we I really couldn't fit because I was still pleasing everybody at that time. And our kids were upset. Um, they, they, they hated the whole idea of us getting married. And so there was just a lot... A lot of negativity going around. I was so glad when the day was over. Me too. And also, we had ordered uh, two beds from, what was the name of that company? A Christ. Yeah, from Christ. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I said, we need these no later than I gave them the date. And so the day before we're getting married, the beds still hadn't arrived. And we have families staying with us at the house. And these are elderly people. Where are they going to sleep? So I was crazed with everything that was going on. So I called Christ. I said, where are the beds? And they gave me some answer. And the, basically the answer was, we're not going to be able to deliver them. So I said, if you don't deliver those effing beds <laughs> by the end of the day, and the next thing I knew, there's a seven foot policeman at our front door. Oh my God. Now I'm upstairs washing the brown out of my hair and Morley Paper sitting in the living room. And the police are at the door. <laughs> you guys, do you know what? This sounds like a this really sounds like good Three's movie. Company. This sounds actually like a Three's Company it episode. It actually sounds like a great movie called like The Wedding Day. The yeah. Wedding Day. But you know, you oh, know yeah. who yeah. made really good friends with Morley Safer? Who? My mother-in-law, my, my husband's mother. She's a, a great Jewish mother and makes incredible soup. And so she's making soup for Morley. And Morley feels like he's back home again. Well, Morley, Morley's mother and my mother knew each other. Oh, my God. Stop. Really? Yeah, from Toronto. Toronto. Oh my God. I, I think they both came from some some similar place in Eastern Europe somewhere. So you get the picture of the day? I not only have the picture, but I actually see it like it's happening around me. That's how clear it I is. I really feel like this is more of like Roger a, and I are both Jewish, so we really have the Jewish scene set too. You know yeah. like you you know it's like vacation, <laughs> European vacation. This is like wedding vacation like you it's know like if they steve, had like it's the like a off, steve martin chevy chase chevy chase situation. it's like if chevy chase was getting married this would be his day <laughs> pretty much my mother-in-law was so accepting of me uh, being a non-jew she said but the irish are the lost tribe of israel so that's how i got <laughs> swept into the fold <laughs> really that's amazing you know you were asking before about um celebrating anniversary anniversary and the reality is, you know, we have for the last 40 years, actually 41 years, we have not spent one night apart. And because we're in business, we're together 24 7. Same as us. Same as us. So we have been together constantly, nonstop for 41 years. And every day, I'm not kidding, every day there's some kind of celebration. Every night at five o'clock, we both go to what, what Suzanne calls Big Al's Bar, and we have a tequila. I love that. Suzanne is an incredible cook. I mean, amazing. She's written, uh, of her 27 books, nine were cookbooks, and 27. they were all New York Times bestsellers. Jesus. So I'm eating five-star meals every <laughs> night at dinner, okay, after we have our tequila cocktails. <laughs> so every day is really a celebration. So when it comes to celebrating dates, it's like, I don't know what else we could do. Well, my, my birthday was last weekend. Happy, and we birthday. Happy birthday. So Thank was you. Rogers. Wait, what did, oh, wait. What, October what, 16. Oh, so you're a Libra. I'm Libra, a, so yeah. is I'm Roger. Libra. Alan, when's your birthday? I'm, I'm the first, September 1st. Uh, no, you're not. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm September September 30th. <laughs> you're September 1st. Yes, exactly. Actually, you know, actually, the, the day she turned 75 was a very special day for me. Last weekend. Yeah, because... Happy birthday! First, yeah, that was the first time in my life I had ever slept with a 75-year-old woman. <laughs> 
I love that so much. Okay, can I just much. say something officially? You, this is my, you you're my, my favorite couple. You are my absolute favorite couple. We are putting, couple. like, we got to put this on the website. Like, this favorite episode favorite. ever, ever, ever. As a CEO, fashion authority, and mom, I know it's the details that truly matter. And when it comes to luxury, every stitch must be perfectly tailored. That's why driving the sleek Genesis GV80 is such a luxurious experience. The SUV's exterior design, including two-line LED headlamps, exudes athletic elegance. When you sit inside the expansive GV80 cabin, you can customize the ambient interior lighting to match your current mood, a feature that makes driving in LA a more relaxed and serene experience. So go ahead, take a close look at the Genesis GV80, and you'll see. Lux is in the details. Can I just tell you guys are officially our heroes? But by the way... Alan, a couple of things. You and Roger are going to be best friends. At approximately five <laughs> o'clock, I also go over to said <laughs> liquor cabinet, and I more I I go for Tangeray Ten um, because I like Tangeray and I like gin. <laughs> um, but that's what I have. I and, have wine. I'm and, a wine. And, and Rachie has wine, so we kind of do that too and chill. But the one thing I will really, I'm just, I, I really got to ask: You've never spent a night away from your wife? Like, what about like boys trips? Does that? Not you know, I, I've never, I've never had a night out with a boy. Oh, actually, I had one. Son Bruce, I don't know, forty years ago, uh, was into wine, and even though I, I had a substantial wine cellar, I never really understood wine. And he said, well, we're doing a wine tasting and it's going to be in Beverly Hills. And actually, it's under the street. And there's some wine thing under the street. He said, why don't you come with me? So I went with him and everyone brought their favorite bottle of wine. And I'm sitting there with eight other guys. And there's I hear things like, hmm, it has licorice notes. What? Right. <laughs> Sambuca. And you're like miserable. Yeah. That was the only that was the only time I've ever had a night out with the boys and I'll never do it again. But we go out with couples. We, we right. like yeah, yeah. great Same. couples. Same. I like couples that like each other. Yeah. By the way, there are a lot of similarities. Can I tell you something, you guys? Roger and I, we constantly say, my my friends, because we're we're almost never apart, really. Like, I mean, maybe two to four nights in a year he'll like go on a golf night with his friends or whatever but we always say the biggest challenge of our lives is finding couples that are strong that like we love spending time with where they really like each other still that's a huge challenge and I'm wondering if that's a challenge for you because I'm thinking if we're you know 30 years in and you guys are 50 years in it's got to be challenging sometimes to find like I know Suzanne for me like so many of my girlfriends never go out with their husbands and I always want to go out with my husband me too you know? yeah me too I think no, no. I think our nightly date yeah it adds so much to our relationship because we both are doing our thing I sit and write all day and he's he uh, he runs the business part of our business I shut down at five o'clock and we sit together and we relax and we talk. In fact, the last residency I had in Vegas was a couple of years ago at the Westgate. I had my own room and uh, I was really looking forward to it because I had performed in Vegas for uh, a couple of decades, always in big shows, you know, 12 dancers and 25 people orchestras but the act I always loved the most was whenever we would go to see Sinatra I love I loved him walking the out king oh. drink in his hand and the the relaxed tie on his tuxedo and he had he had a big band but sometimes he he loved loved saloon gigs where he had a, a small band so I uh, put together a six-piece band of my favorite musicians that I've worked with over the years and at, at our Big Al's bar, Alan and I put the act together. I would sing to him something. And, you know, when you're sharing mm -hmm. a tequila, you get real loose. And it was very, very honest. And, you know, when I mounted that show, um, which Alan produced, I got the greatest reviews of my entire career in Vegas. In fact, the headline was Vegas is back. And I think yes. what they were wow. saying was, no long, it, this was not a big electronic show. I walked out and, you know, you sing a song and then you talk. 
and you pick mm -hmm. up the energy of the room and you can kind of pick up the feeling of how up they are, how down they are and how much you've got to do to get them right in that zone. And um, it was a challenge every night for me to talk to them in a way that if I got this compliment after the show, I knew I succeeded when people would say to me, I felt like you were talking just to me. And that's what I was trying to do. And um, clearly you did it, Suzanne, because uh, I just would like to share with our listeners that you were named Las Vegas Female Entertainer of the Year in yeah. 1986, which is a, a really big Sinatra. deal. Along well, I with mean, Sinatra. Wow. God, God, that's no big deal. At Sinatra all. was male entertainer and I was female entertainer. Mm -hmm. So cool. Mm -hmm. That wow. is maybe one of the coolest things That's I've insane. ever heard. <laughs> oh, see, after that, I would be like, I'm done. I can retire. It can't get better than this, right? I mean. You know, Sinatra was a friend of ours, both, both Frank and Barbara. And we lived, we, we lived very close to one another. And we, would, we didn't see them often. But when we did, it was a very special time. And uh, so we went to Frank's last performance at the McCallum Theater in, in Palm Springs. And it was, it was a very sad experience because it was the end of his professional life. And he needed assistance to remember the lyrics to songs he had sung all his life. And then afterwards, he and Barbara invited us back to their home and there were about a dozen other people and Frank always loved having music around him. So he had a little trio playing and they were serving cocktails. And uh, so I went, I went to the bathroom. And when I came back, Suzanne is now singing with the trio. You've got balls of steel. <laughs> you are singing in Frank Sinatra's house to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anybody who would like that more than Frank. Yeah. You know, he, he's a he's an entertainer and I'm an entertainer. And so you do what you do. Yeah. You do what you do. You do what you do. You do what you do. And, and, I, and so you mentioned, Suzanne, that Alan runs the business part of um, the business. How did you did you like wake up one day and decide to do it together? Or how did that how did that genesis? Because that's the other question we get asked. Yeah, how do you do business together? And I, I, I think Don't you, you got, get sick of each other. Don't you want to kill each other? As we all know and we tell people it's the best. We roll around our business trips. We never are, have to leave each other. Yeah, our business trips are us. It's amazing. Yeah. It's fun. Well, you know, I, I've always I've always had a business of one kind or another. And um this our business started the day she was fired from Three's Company. And the reason she was fired was because she wanted to be paid what the men were making. They had lesser shows and they were making 10 to 15 times more money. And so I went in, I went in to negotiate the deal. My contract was up. Her contract was up. What we did not know was that Laverne and Shirley had gone in, their contract it was up a, a month before. And they had gone in, the two together, and had negotiated the most incredible deal for themselves to continue doing the show. And the parent company of ABC decided, you know what? We have to stop women from asking to be paid what the men are making. So let's fire the biggest female star in television and no woman will ask to be paid what the men are making. And it worked for eight years. Stop. Wow. Not one woman except until Roseanne came along. Uh -huh. And Roseanne is fearless. And we know Roseanne really well. She used to open for Suzanne in Vegas. And uh, she went into ABC. She put a one-page treatment on the table for the show Roseanne. They looked at it. They said, we love it. We want to do it. And she said, great. I want to be paid $750,000 a week to start. And they laughed at her. And she picked up the page and started moving toward the elevator. And they looked at each other and said, what are we, crazy? And they hired her. And she was the first woman to break through. Wow. And then after that, I mean, you know the deal that Friends made? Yeah, of oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and anyway, in today's uh, environment, you couldn't get away with not paying women parody. Right. For what it's worth, when you were gone, I stopped watching of it. Of course, everybody did. Like, who, like well, the thing went in the garbage. Ego always spoils the best deals, okay? It's sometimes money, but it's, it's usually ego. And the main producer 
said to Abe when ABC went to them and said, When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with smart water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging, and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart Water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of Smart Water and the sports cup is great for their very, very active days. Smart Water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart Water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. My dad works in B2B marketing, but I never really knew what that meant. Then one day, my dad came by my school for career day and told everyone in my class he was a big MQL man. Then he just kept saying things like, the more MQLs, the better, over and over. My friends still laugh at me to this day. I think it means marketing qualified lead. One thing's for sure. I'll be known as the MQL man's kid for the rest of my days. Why couldn't you just be a fireman or a lawyer? Why? You ruined my life, Dad. Not everyone gets B2B, but LinkedIn has the people who do. And with ads on LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people based on job title, industry, likelihood to buy, and more. Start converting your B2B audience into high-quality leads today. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash customer to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash customer. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I am constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with smart water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging and smart water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of smart water and the sports cup is great for their very, very active days. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. 
When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking Smart Water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with Smart Water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging, and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart Water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of Smart Water, and the sports cup is great for their very, very active days. Smart Water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart Water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. This is what we want to do. He said to them, not a problem. I'll just bring in another blonde. I'll train her like a seal and we'll just carry on. And as you know, they brought in not just one blonde, but two blondes. And unfortunately, it, they didn't live up to what Chrissy Snow was on the show because it was about chemistry, chemistry with John and chemistry with uh, yeah. Joyce DeWitt. So unfortunately, uh, the guy from uh, Cats Television, which I think is some kind of distribution situation for independent TV, he said to me one day at a convention, he said, Suzanne being fired from Three's Company was the greatest self-inflicted wound in the history of television. And the producers and the distributor lost well over $1 billion by doing it. Oh, my God. Yeah. When, we, when I was on Three's Company, uh, Alan and I being business-minded, we talked to them about, you know, Chrissy Snow um, it, it has a look. We should do a line of clothing of, of hot pants and suspenders, definitely, and yeah, knee socks and slip on, you know, snap on ponytails and do the whole thing. And uh, the the producer who I have a, a little bit of a story about said, "This is not a show about business; it's about the show." And I thought, mm, "I think it's called show business." And then we went <laughs> again and said, "Chrissy Snow should have an animated Saturday mo morning cartoon show." And then another time we went in and said, Chrissy Snow should be a movie star, The Adventures of Chrissy Snow. I mean, you could see where all the little girls would come. A hundred percent. The Adventures of Chrissy Snow. But also, one day I got a call from Steven Spielberg. He said, would it be okay if I came over to your house and spoke with Suzanne about a, a, a role in a film that I'm doing? So he came over on a Saturday afternoon and the two of them sat up on the roof. We were living on the beach in Venice in those days. And they spent most of the afternoon together. And then he offered her the role. And it meant that Three's Company would have to start production a week later than was scheduled. And they said, absolutely not. We don't care who it is. And we're not starting a week later. So that was that. So then the following year, we get a call from Dustin Hoffman's agent who says, Dustin is doing a movie. Uh, he's got a great part for Suzanne. And uh, would you guys come to New York and meet with Dustin? So we go to New York and Suzanne meets with Dustin. And again, they would the, the schedule for Three's Company would have to move by a week. They said, absolutely. And I said, you guys are crazy. I said, do you understand? Like what this is going to do for the show and everything else. They really never got it. They were stuck. And uh, these were. But I think it also was there was another complication. The the producers were Nichols, Ross, and West. And um, Mickey Ross, when I came into the show, uh, you know, I had been discovered by Johnny Carson, and um, that's kind of a wonderful story. But I really had no acting experience, and so I said on day one of the show, I just want you to know that. 
I've never really studied acting, uh, although I had the lead in Guys and Dolls in high school. Can you imagine? <laughs> can, you imagine can you imagine saying that to the cast and the production crew on the first day? You That's could hear amazing. Pictures. You could hear their sphincters slamming shut. <laughs> of course. Shut. Yeah. Yes. But, but what, they, what I was trying to say to them was, I got I was the uh, Adelaide in Guys and Dolls, and uh, Walter Winchell heard about this high school production and came. Walter Winchell was uh, at that time like the most famous radio show guy when when radio shows were few and far between. And he had a specific look. look. He wore a, uh, a tan raincoat and a pork pie hat. And so Damon Runyon, who wrote Guys and Dolls, wrote one of the lead characters fashioned on Walter Winchell. So Walter Winchell had heard about this high school production and came on closing night. Uh, at the end of the show, I don't know who he is, um, the drama teacher asks us all to sit down on the stage and introduces Walter Winchell, comes up on stage and comes right to me and says, you're going someplace, sister. And because of that, I got a scholarship, but then I got good Catholic girl. I got pregnant within months. First time <laughs> I ever had sex. That's another whole story. So now I'm back in the... Ah! The Three's yes. Company, Queen. Um, the Three's Company uh, uh, rehearsal hall, day one. I say I never had, but I got the leading guys and dolls, and and I could feel the the darkness come over the room. And I said, but I'm a real fast learner, which I am, by the way. So this guy, Mickey Ross, took me under his wing. Like, remember, maybe you don't, but in the Olympics there was Nadia Comaneci and her coach she would do a flip and a turn then she'd look to him for approval and yep. give her a thumbs up or a yep. thumbs down yeah that's how i worked with this guy he was an old vaudevillian he taught me a lot and it wasn't too long after that i see, i didn't realize that during this time i was working with him working with him that he had fallen in love with me i could have told you that so i didn't realize it and i was very still naive and in the middle of year two i was watching john ritter and i went Oh, I get it. Comedy is musical. I'm musical. It's set up, set up, beat. I totally understood the rhythm of, of um, bouncing the, the the line back to John, and we got so good at that, like a ping pong ball game. Right. So yeah. I say to Vicky Ross, this guy who had fallen in love with me, unbeknownst to me, uh, I'm going to marry Alan Hamill. Well, a, a darkness came over him. And he told me I was crazy and I'm going to ruin my career and how could you and all that. And from that moment on, he did everything he could to sabotage me. So when Alan went in to renegotiate six years later, guess who we renegotiated right. with? Mm -hmm. And the ABC lawyers, right. Mickey Foss. Right. And Alan told them, as he repeats to me, you know, Suzanne's been on 55 national magazine covers most every year. She has her own specials. She's been on everybody else's specials. She's in demand. She's number one demographics. And the men are being paid 15 times more. So she'd like to be paid what the highest paid man is. Mickey Ross stands up. He's smoking a cigarette the way someone would smoke a joint. And he puts the cigarette on the floor and stomps it out, walks over to Alan's chair, leans over him and says, you want me to share my blood with her? And Alan said, yes. And I was fired. <laughs> wow. wow. That is a story. I was only in there for less than five minutes. So at that time, there were no cell phones. So I'm waiting for Alan to come home. The night before, he had gotten a call from someone at the CFO's office in, at ABC in New York and said, he didn't hear this from me but they're going to hang a nun in the marketplace and it's going to be Suzanne. In the morning when Alan left, uh, he op opened the front door and uncharacteristically said, look back at me. He said, you know, this could all blow out of the water. I said, no, it's a negotiation. You ask for this, we counter, you counter, we can meet in the middle and it's all going to be great. So I'm waiting at home and I'm waiting and waiting and it's about three hours and there's a way the front door opens when it's good news and there's a way it opens when it's bad news. So true. <laughs> So the door opens real slow and I hear him slowly padding up the stairs. So I met him at the landing. And he looked at me and he said, you're out. I said, I'm out. He said, yeah. He said, th th they fired you within five minutes. And then he took me by the shoulders and he said, we're going to make this work for us. And, um, and we did. You he, sure did. He had a plan and um, he made my deal in Vegas for me. Because if the public couldn't see me on the air, they all they crowded my showrooms. And that's probably why I became Entertainer of the Year. 
And then I loved, I loved live performing so much that I didn't care if I ever went back to TV. Sure. And then during the day, when you're on the road with a nightclub act, I had nothing to do. And so I started writing books. And so 27 of them. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. I've written two and I'm like just now coming around to thinking about a third. What people I think don't understand about writing books is they are labors of love. Yeah. They are so much work and soul that go, that are poured into a book. So 27 of them is, is just unreal. I just need to point that out. Whereas we're talking about all negatives are opportunities. This is part of the success of our marriage, okay? <laughs> Saying yes. Happy, yes. Wa- happy wife, happy life. And the, the other thing that works in our marriage is, as soon as she opens her eyes in the morning, I wake up before she does. I wait for her to wake up. As soon as she opens her eyes, I say, I'm sorry. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? And that's good till around 2 or 3 o'clock, and then I say it again. And that takes me through to cocktail time. So that's one of the big. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, this is so, you, this is Alan lying. Okay, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh-huh. So anyway, my father, Alan, for what it's worth, my dad, my parents have been together fifty five years. They're celebrating wow. this this wow. uh, Thanksgiving, yeah. and my dad would probably say the same thing. Yeah. Look how look how your relationship is mirroring that. Oh, there's the front door, Suzanne. That's your IT guy. That's my IT guy. I'll finish the interview. Okay, you finish the interview. So, Suzanne. Alan, thank you. Alan, thank you. <laughs> He's gone. Okay. He's gone. All right, He's been gonna have, for this all right for so it's going to be hard playing the newlywed game with uh, Alan gone, <laughs> but it's okay. So what's your advice? I, I mean, I think Alan was starting to allude to it, but I think most of the people that listen really want to know, like, how do I get what they have? And I guess the question is, you know, what are the secrets or what are the learnings? I, I think it's a, a simple. We give each other a lot of attention. He must tell me I'm beautiful 20 times a day. I, I probably say the same thing to him. I, just, I, I love to look at him. He loves to look at me. Uh, we love everything about each other, and we tell each other all the time. So you're just constantly feeling reaffirmed. You feel great about yourself and um, great for one another's self-esteem. And then I feed him well. <laughs> by the way, this is this not, is pretty similar. This is pretty by the similar, way. although Rachel doesn't. I told tell... you you look the best now that you've ever looked. I tell you that all the time. Mm. Yeah, he's a six at... pack. This is Rachel lying. Oh, you're so sweet. But I do tell Rachel she's beautiful every single day. Every yeah, day. every single day for twenty. You have had a magical career, Rachel. Really, thank you. Your you're name has so been out sweet. there for so long. Thank you. I really appreciate that coming from you. It means so much because you're. Such a hero. I I can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough for taking the time. You are literally a champion. Such an inspiration, though, Such too. Such an business. inspiration. You know, also business, You, I mean, obviously you're so successful and you did it on your own terms, which I love. And that's the thank real you. key takeaway. And you got to be a warrior in this business. Yes. Um, I don't mean argumentative as a warrior, just strong and tough. And when the big fist comes, you, you know, you turn right or left. Our, our careers are cyclical in that they're high and low and high and low. It's real easy in the high times, real easy. But it's the low times that is your greatest opportunity because you have finally have time to think. And in all of my low times, I've just used them to um, rethink what it is that I'm doing and where I can take it. Well, I just want to thank you again because you are really like no thank other. You, thank you. And this was I feel my favorite episode. I feel changed as a person. I right agree. Now. I feel. I feel well. happy. We're gonna start reading one of your twenty-seven books this week. <laughs> I'm gonna read. Now, just so you're aware, I'm gonna read it to Rachel because she's not really gonna read a book. Just I'm totally aware. reading her books. I'm on it. There's books on tape, right? Love you. Well, your books are. Your thank books you. Oh, bye bye. Thank you so much. Seriously, I'm blown away. I'm changed as a person. I I feel like I just had a um a spiritual experience. Me too. I feel somewhat cleansed. Some I just feel smarter. I feel stronger. I feel like an invincible woman. 
I feel like that was the happiest marriage I've ever seen in my life. I think that might be our number one marriage so far. I, can we just aim for that? Because they're 20 years ahead of us in marriage. Mm -hmm. And they're exactly 20 years ahead of us in being together. They're 50 years together and 44 years married. So can we aim for this? Let's plan. Aim high, baby. Let's five o'clock cocktail. Well, we do that. You keep telling me I'm beautiful. I let's do that. not let's not fail on that. I have to tell you you're beautiful more. Obviously. That's the I, deficiency. I own that. I own that. I but own by the that. Way, you I own that. I own it. Okay. Just quit while you're ahead. Don't make a comment. I'm just trying to tell you, honey, actions speak louder than words. So rather than say it. I just said I own it. Now you're gonna ruin you could, it. No, now I'm not gonna want to do it. Show me how much you love me. <sighs> Snooze. Um, so okay. anyway, by the way, let's just, can we just, they work no, together. Can we just give Alan the due that he deserves. I mean, he is the man. I mean, he was like, I'm she over was rolling Canada. with Frank Sinatra, yeah, but he's like, I'm over Canada. I'm just going to, you know, zip down into like LA. Oh, <laughs> by the way, I'm just like, Oh, the most beautiful woman in LA. Yep. There we go. And it's like amazing. I think he's like the man and he's so smart. He's business wise. so smart. I mean, they're I think just he, smart together, you know. I think they. I think they. Mm -hmm. It's funny. It's like sort of like you and I. Like we're kind of smarter together because we can, you know, not. It's a yin and yang. Sort of like you, you got two fronts. You got the creative front and the business front at the same time, and you know, as long as you're aligned, like they certainly are. It seems like uh, you get some more strength from that. I could have literally spoken to them until tomorrow. I agree. Like there, I had so many more questions. A thousand more, and we didn't even play the the newlywed game with them. Not that oh, we don't even need it. I feel like they're living the newlywed game. No, it's amazing. Well, they, you know what? They would actually get everything right. It would be annoying. But They'd be also, like, oh, da da da. But also, like the the irony for me is that Chrissy Snow, if you think about the irony of her life, how it turned out, and what the character she played was, because she played this like beautiful ditzy blonde character and she's the polar opposite of ditzy she lectured to six thousand doctors <laughs> i'm pretty sure you can't be a dum dum exactly to do that. 27 books did i repeat 27 books thigh masters they're crushing it and it's not like they're out there being like oh we're crushing it they're just quiet mm -hmm. and happy yep. i love it Good yep. for them. I have to say that episode, I've loved all of our episodes, but I'm just going to go with this might be my favorite. But so there's far. also a ton of nostalgia because, you know, she didn't I, just touch Frank Sinatra. She performed and they were friends they were with friends. Frank Sinatra. He had a martini casual. with Frank Sinatra. Many, In Palm Springs. Many of them. Like, do you know how chic that it's is? so chic. Oh my God. What do you think they were wearing? <sighs> uh, I didn't even get to ask that question. I wanted to ask. Like, what do they wear no, for that? No, I wanted that? to ask Alan what she was wearing his first uh, first time he saw her, if he remembered. But I, didn't oh, get to ask. I guarantee you he remembers. I'm sure he did. That's but why. I also, you know what else I loved? I have to say before, before I move on, I loved how candid they were. I loved how honest. They were unapologetically honest. They weren't hiding anything. They were and fully, everything this, was on the table. And even to this day, it's funny the way he said when she was fired. Like, it's a very, like, most people, like, wouldn't even use those words. Yeah, it's but true. But it's just so transparent. It wasn't like sugar. No, this is what happened. This is what we did about that. And this is what we learned yeah. from it. It was like I agree. so refreshing. But right? wouldn't you agree that our lowest points have been our, have changed us and made us like, for me, my lowest points of my life and career made me better and stronger because it, I refocused and, and really like, it gives you that time to really think, she was you know, right. That's, I mean, in a weird way, that's kind of what COVID did for a lot of people. Yes. Is how are we going to reinvent ourselves? I agree. What's the next version of ourselves? And do we want to be this version for the next 10 years? And I think a lot of people thought about that and said, mm, maybe not. But I loved how honest she was about blending families. Cause I think not that many people are that honest about that and how hard that is actually, you know, and I, I really appreciated that. If you want more Climbing in Heels content, follow me on at Rachel Zoe and at Climbing in Heels pod on Instagram for more updates and upcoming guest episodes and all things curatorial.